All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Spring 2022 Ace Pitch Contest. It is truly an honor to have all of you here, and I am so excited for the entrepreneurs. My name is Nicole Hall, and I'm the coordinator of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship at Bristol Community College. This evening, I would like to start off by introducing the Dean of the Business and Experiential Education area at Bristol Community College. Dean Reggie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Nicole. Good evening, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Just wanted to drop by to say hi and wish all the participants based on best of luck uh, presenting your entrepreneurial ideas. You all are going to be awesome. Uh, in any business, as they say, there is always something to learn, right? Uh, there are no two days that are alike. Uh, so more than winning or losing, please use this event as a learning opportunity. Uh, I, I also want to sort of like extend my sincere thanks to all the judges for their valuable time and, and, and guidance. Without, without your support, this event uh, would not be possible. And my special gratitude to our fearless East uh, leader, Nicole Hall. Uh, Nicole, thanks for all you do uh, for the Center and Students in the Entrepreneurship Program. Our students are truly lucky uh, to have you uh, as their professor and mentor. So thank you for having me and best wishes to everyone. Thank you, Dean Reggie. I really appreciate it. So this evening, I would like to start off by introducing the judges. So first, we're going to start off with Richard Romero. Good evening, everyone. My name is Richard Romero. Uh, I'm an ACE advisory board member as well as vice president of hospitality and marketing for um, DNB Hospitality, uh, a slew of six restaurants in the New Bedford area. And I was a former owner of Mirasol's Cafe in Dartmouth as well. Thank you, Richard. Next, we have Stephen Martins joining us as a judge. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve, and I'm also a proud Bristol alum, and I'm a past um, elected New Bedford City Councilor for the past 10 years. I've also worked in numerous um, state organizations where I also am now at the Massachusetts State Lottery Commission. In addition, I have my own business where I am a justice for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and also the state of Rhode Island. So good luck to everyone. I'm looking forward to hearing all of your business ideas. Awesome, thank you, Stephen. Next, we have Jennifer Greenman. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Greenman. I am an ACE Advisory Board member. I am also a realtor and I am an entrepreneur in all things regarding real estate. Awesome, thanks for being here, Jen. And next, we have Kevin Bedard. Hey everyone, my name is Kevin. I'm a digital marketing manager and I specialize in planning and managing um, marketing campaigns to help businesses promote their online brands. Thank you, Kevin. And last but not least, we have Vaughn. Hi everybody, good evening. My name is Vaughn Marie Monis. I am the program manager for e for all South Coast or Entrepreneurship for All, um, which is a program um, that helps entrepreneurs start, grow, or pivot their business. We offer business courses, uh, mentorship, and seed funding. I'm also a proud alum of Bristol Community College. I'm a business owner myself. I am a wedding planner and uh, wedding officiant. Von Marie Co. is the name. And yeah, I'm very excited to be here with you all. Good luck. Awesome, thank you so much judges. So now we get to the fun part. We get to the part that we have been waiting for. So we have four finalists this evening that are going to present their business idea to the judges. They're gonna pitch their idea and they are gonna convey to the judges why they should win a thousand dollars. And this evening we'll be awarding one out of the top four contestants a thousand dollars from the Bristol Foundation. So every single entrepreneur that's going to present tonight has three minutes. That's it. All right. So the moment we have all been waiting for, Noah, you are the first entrepreneur to present. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Nicole. So hi, my name is Noah Bryan. I am the CEO of Kitsune Inc. We are a C corporation and we're hoping to change how everything pretty much works in the world. We have always been a very big company that kind of got confused, I heard recently, with a similar mission. But for me, it's to expand on that. That's where I feel they failed. There's this nonprofit gap. No one can help make the opportunities that someone like me needs. 
So my company hopes to offer persons with disabilities like myself that are limited by 20 hours a week and helping them actually make money to pretty much meet their cost of living. I can tell you from personal experience, I've always struggled with this. Um, a lot of our other things that we want to focus on are making more low-income housing. Currently, we looked at a building today for $500,000 in New Bedford, Stephen. So we are trying to work out getting a loan. We're looking into doing agricultural as our other future projections. We're currently trying to work on workforce robotics is our main goal for this year. We hope to work with agricultural robotics as the starting subset of what we're working on. So from there, we're also going to be looking at trying to make grant opportunities for people of disabilities to get more higher education opportunities so that they can go to colleges such as BCC, such as myself. I'm a first year student, so never thought I'd be in college, never thought I would be here, most definitely. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. I figured I'd leave some room for that. Thank you, Noah. Do any of the judges have any questions for Noah? I have one question for Noah. <clears throat> How do you plan to raise the funding to support the low income housing for your company? So currently we're looking into a low income housing credit and we're trying to work with a bank that we're already approached before. We're going to be approaching them tomorrow and discussing a loan system. The city of New Bedford has offered an $80 million collective grant for job reformation. So that's where the agriculture comes in is we're trying to convert a 92,000 square foot building into a low income housing as well as into indoor vertical farming. So we have a lot of different ways from loans to contracts to tax credits to get the funding we need. Amazing, thank you. No problem. All right, I just wanna check in. Does any other judges have any questions for Noah? I just have a, I just have a quick question. Um, no, why did why did you start this? Why did you come up with this? I'm just I'm just curious. So for me, I've always been a very bad person about hearing the word no. I've never known it to exist in my world. So a lot of people have always kind of in school actually is a good example. I've never worked with school systems. I was always my teacher's worst nightmare because if I did a math problem the way I saw to do it, but still got it right, and she told me you did it wrong. No, I didn't. I did it my way. <laughs> so. I've always found that in work environments, it's going to be a struggle for me of just, I always see improvements, but not being able to rise to those managerial positions because of my disability status. I feel, all right, no one else is going to do it. I'll start making those positions available and start it myself. That's great. Thank you. No problem. Noah, I have one other question. Sure thing. Do you mind sharing what your disability is so that we can get a full view of sure somewhat what you're doing and what you're trying to produce for others? So I'm a high functioning person on the autism spectrum. So a lot of what I've encountered in my life is pretty much you kind of get thrown into the society of crazy noises and everything else that's a sensory nightmare. And I've always seen ways to improve it, ways to fix it, but no one's has an interest because obviously I'm sure for most people that aren't on the spectrum, a loud buzzing T5 light in a grocery store won't bother you. The, you know, squeaking wheel won't bother you. For me, it's why aren't we making environments for people like myself who need those environments to be able to live a happy, sustainable life and feel like we're welcomed instead of kind of forced to try and suffer through a lot of the daily struggles, as I just mentioned. Thank you. No problem. I do have a question, Nicole, if we have time for one more. Of um, course, Vaughn. I wanna make sure all questions are answered. Thank you. Um, so Noah, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I have two children on the spectrum, so to see you thriving is very, um, is very beautiful. So kudos to you for what okay. you've already done and what you're building. 
Um, my question for you though is how do you plan to make these opportunities? Like what, how, what is the, the steps that you have to take in order to make sure that these opportunities are being made available? So currently my goal is, is that I've been through a lot of disability programs in the past. So I do have connections and communication channels through those disability programs. So my plan is, is through our company, we're hoping to make employment contract opportunities like they already have, but just kind of offer them in a vaster form. Even we're going to hopefully try and work with the Mass Rehabilitation Commission. They have pretty much the largest pool of persons with disabilities that need employment opportunities. Thank you so much. All right, last call. Does anyone have any questions for Noah? All right, thank you so much, Noah. And, um, you know, I'm not a judge this evening, so I have no part in the decision process, but I can definitely speak, um, you know, to your work ethic and you know, being your professor. And it really is to Vaughn's point. It truly is amazing to see, you know, you're putting your dreams into fruition and you're not letting anything stop you. And you're very persistent and determined. And I think that goes a long way. And that's a lot to be said for how driven of a person you are. So um, congratulations for even just presenting and making it this far. And I wish you the best of luck, Noah. Thank you, Nicole. All right. No problem. All right. So next we have Emma. Emma, are you ready to present? Yes, I am. Okay. The floor is yours. Okay. Hello. I hope all, everyone is doing well tonight. My name is Emma Cullen and currently I am a junior at BCC and it has just been such a great journey. Honestly, it made me really appreciate going back to school. And right now I am working at DeWitt Animal Hospital as a veterinary assistant. And here I go with my Pritch. So my, this is my dog, my coworker, South Dakota, David Cullen, who's head of our socialization program at my business, Emma's, which stands for Emma's Miles McManners Animal Adventures. During the pandemic, it has turned our worlds upside down and it brought into a lot of uncertainty, which brought in a lot of animals into our lives with the amount of free time people are experiencing at home. But with the, but with the workforce shortage, we are, have a loss of professional experience care to take care of our animals while we are away at work with restrictions loosening up and people going, leaving their animals for longer periods of time they are um they need trusted care for these animals um that which they deserve without compromise my services include overnights in-home care nail trims training walks etc and these skills developed from my love of animals from a, as a young girl i worked on horse farms and kennels and i feel very comfortable dealing with a wide range of animal needs such as fear, aggression, or even elderly care. With a growing reputation and clientele base, I'm in need of a new equipment to invest in to help me expand. Currently, I own a 2013 Toyota Tacoma tow truck, which only allows me to bring two dogs with me safely to say, um, training sessions or exercise sessions. By investing towards a hard cap, I could safely move up to five dogs um, to new locations, which will help me ex serve, help me better serve um, clients and also expand my business. Thank you for listening to Dakota and I's pitch. Um, please reach out if you or your furry or not so furry friend needs an animal adventure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Emma. Do any Thank of the judges you. have any questions for Emma? I do. Um, Emma, great job, by the way. I do have a question. How long have you been in business? It seems it seems like you have already slowly started um, your business. So I'm curious about that. And obviously, there's there's a lot of lots of competition out there, right? So I'd like to know what makes you different than your 
than your competition? I have been working with animals. <laughs> I've been working on horse farms since I was seven years old, but I truly started my dog, not just dog walking, but animal care business. Cause I also serve large animal needs such as hor horses, cows, sheep. Um, I've been doing this for at least five years now, but in the last two years since the pandemic, I've been really trying to expand. And that is the issue that there is a lot of competition in the area, but I do not compromise the animal's well being. And I also, I make it work. I communicate with the owners and I make it a very personalized training situation or an exercise situation for that particular animal. And that's why my dog is so important because I can serve them with their socialization needs. And I am. I've worked with trainers and I feel comfortable with train, um, training with muzzles. So I yeah. offer from either fear aggression or just aggression cases very comfortably. Yeah, I can feel that passion from you as well too. Um, with so one last question and I'll yield the floor um, to my colleagues. Um, your marketing, what, is, what are some of the things that you do with marketing your business? <laughs> Actually, um, I currently just made some from some business cards that I really enjoyed how they came out. And I also um, do my own embroidering. So I will put that onto my own clothing. Just while I'm out doing dog walking or my other clients, I'll, I get people like, oh, you're like my shirt. And I'm like, yeah, like I have a dog walking business. And also I'll go to dog parks with my dog clients and they're asking me like oh who's that great dane and i'm like oh it's not mine it's it's the dog walk and i've gotten so many recent clients just from the dog park and pointing out the dogs i'm currently training awesome job thank you thank you i do have a question if i could of course. um good job on the presentation by the way uh, how, how many clients do you have and how, how to how many clients do you wish to expand to in the near future I would say cur I at least have it 20 in the database, but it's very irregular. Currently, I, I'm trying to market towards having a more of a um, communi like communication with them so I can have at least once or twice a week with that animal just to keep the ball rolling and having not only profit, but to have my progress with that animal going because it's very difficult mm -hmm. but i would love to have at least like i would like to have at least five more dogs that i could see a week okay. and are your, are your services uh in home or do you go to the clients homes or how does that I, work i serve them all whatever their needs are i have no problem bringing them back to my house but i prefer to go to the owner's home just because the animal feels more comfortable the people feel more comfortable and i can they i can just leave them there and mm. okay and they don't need to be created unless that's what the owners do mm. okay all right thank you and i, I have one question also <laughs> sorry can you hear me okay yes i can great um, so, you know, you speak very specifically about dogs. Are you offering any marketing or advertising to people who have other types of animals? Is there anything that your outreach, you know, multi, multi pet homes, people with cats, dogs, birds, etc. Are you offering your services or any incentives for multiple pets at one time, things of that nature? I definitely do. I mention it to people. I have it on my business card, like furry friends, including fish, reptiles, et cetera. Like I Great. have the experience with them, but I do, I do need to market more towards that clientele because I feel like there is a lack of market. in it. So you're looking to expand as a whole. Exactly. Great. Thank you so much. I have uh, a couple of questions. Um, if you don't mind, Nicole. So uh, I currently have um, two entrepreneurs in this cohort that are um, pet sitters and pet, you know, in the pet care 
industry. Um, so it's definitely something that's up and coming and, you know, more people are looking for your services. So um, my question is, what is your service area and what is your plan to um, to keep up with the high demand? My service area includes, I have a travel fee if it is outside, if it is more than a 20 minute drive. So I feel I'm very comfortable with traveling towards these animals. I communicate on a basis with the owners of, look, this is my hours and this is what you want. Let's make it work. And I, excuse me, what is the second part of your question? How do you um, plan to keep up with um, high demand? Oh, yes. Okay. I, I schedule um, everything. I write down like how long it takes to get there. And I feel very comfortable with taking on many more dogs. And that is why I need to invest into my truck to be able to get more dogs into it safely. Because currently it's only a cab truck and I, it, I can only fit two dogs at a time. But when I hopefully get the investment, I will be able to put it towards the cap for the truck, which would be allowed five dogs at a time. And I could go to a dog park. I could walk them all on one leash. It, it would bring a lot of possibilities. Thank you. Thank you judges for all of your questions. And thank you, Emma, uh, for presenting. Uh, truly, congratulations to you. Um, and I want to just echo off of what Steven said, just from reading, um, you know, reading your application, I could tell just from your writing how truly passionate you are about animals and your business. So, um, you know, I think we see it here on the screen today um, with your coworker there and your co-presenter. So um, best of luck to you, Emma. Thank you. So next we have Jessica. Jessica, are you ready to present? I am. The floor is yours. Thank you. So I am Jessica Furtado. I am in my final semester at BCC. I major in sustainable agriculture. Now, one of the reasons I majored in sustainable agriculture is to turn my home family farm into a business. Currently, we are not, the only thing we sell is eggs um, from our free range chickens and ducks. We are really looking to expand. We really want to be able to um, add beehives. That's our biggest thing that we want to add to our farm so we can produce honey and honey byproducts. Right now, I'm currently taking a beekeeping course that is teaching me how to create different candles and different lotions and different things from beeswax, which is pretty amazing. And that is something I really wanna do with my business when we do actually move forward. Um, we also specialize in Oddly colored vegetables, that's one of our favorite things to do. We have purple carrots, purple potatoes. We have uh, purple cauliflower. We've had yellow tomatoes, just all different fun colors, along with your traditional, you know, regular red tomatoes and things like that. Um, but we wanna be able to offer, all of, our, all of our vegetables are organically grown. We wanna be able to offer it to our community at, you know, reasonable prices that are affordable for everyone. Um, we do want to work with farmer mar farmers markets as well, but as far as this scholarship, this would be going towards specifically the beehives, the equipment I need for my beehives, um, the bees themselves, because they do cost money, um, and um, feed for my chickens, because that's one of the biggest portions of our business is the eggs. Awesome. Thank you, Jessica. Do any of the judges yep. have any questions for Jessica? I do. Um, I do. I want to say, Jessica, um, thank you for that. That was great. Um, I want you to change the narrative. And instead of saying, we only sell eggs, say, we sell eggs. And that's <laughs> it. You know, it's awesome. It's an accomplishment. So be proud. You're going to get your beehive and get all the bees in there you know, whatever it is you do. <laughs> you. Um, so I just wanted to say, I, I just wanted to ask, who is your uh, direct competition? Direct com we have a lot, I live in Rehoboth. So we have a lot of competition locally, um, but everybody has their own niche. 
So we have all, we have a couple dairy farms, we have a couple meat farms, we have some that just do a little bit of everything. What we would do with that would set us apart. Um, we also in the off season, I have I create um, home decor and wooden signs out of recycled and repurposed woods, which I hand build, hand paint, and just create on my own. So that's what keeps us in the off season, and that would keep us through to keep us going year round rather than just in the growing season. Thank you. And Thank I you. have one uh, question. Uh, first things first, I think this idea is great. You know, I grew up in Menden and we actually had a local farm at the top of our street, which was amazing. We could go get our vegetables, our eggs, things of that nature. My question is solely based off the bees. Are you able to acquire these bees with the endangerment of the bees right now in society? Yes. How are, right you, now. how are you planning to acquire them and sustain them? Um, right now you can, there are multiple avenues to take in a uh, multiple different, um, I guess beekeepers, but they're, they're large beekeeping organizations. You can pre-purchase not a necessarily not necessarily a hive because the bees are the ones that create the hive but the bees come in a package and it comes in a package of about 300 bees to start your hives and we would start with two hives so we'd have two packages and we have we build the hives and put the bees inside the hives and let them do their own thing um in the class that i'm taking that's one of the reasons i'm taking it is how to sustain them through the winter and make sure that they're alive because in the winter i, I don't know if you know this but they they do die if they get too cold, they don't survive. So it's really a matter of taking care of them and keeping them warm and keeping them ventilated and making sure they have enough food. And, but acquiring the bees is actually one of the easier parts of beekeeping. Good to know. I had no idea. Thank you for the information. Thank you. I do have a question, more curiosity about the uh, colorful veggies that you grow. Are, are yes. They, um, more difficult to grow, more cost, costly, or well, just the same? Just Sometimes the seeds do cost a little bit more, mm -hmm. but they, they taste the same. They're just as delicious mm -hmm. as the yeah. other ones. Um, the purple potatoes were actually some of the best potatoes I had ever eaten. Yeah, is, uh, I grew up in Peru, and uh, that's one of the, the Peruvian purple potatoes, so I'm very familiar with those. Um, but um, output on those is equal or better or the same? Uh, it's about the same. I would say it was about the same. Um, even like we have purple tomatoes too. Those ones, the output on those is amazing. They they flourish, they thrive, they build, they end up branching off in separate. They're probably the easiest to grow because they just keep growing. Yeah. They last okay. longer than our regular beefsteak tomatoes too. Good to know. All right. Well, thank you. One more thing. So you feel as though the bees will really truly expand your business, grow your business and sustain your business. And the investment that you could potentially win today is going to help you achieve that goal in what time frame? In what time frame? Yes. I am hoping to have my bees, my beehives established um, by, by May. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Have, Thank you, judges. Oh, sorry, just, Steven. That's a quick question. Um, and there was all great questions, but I remember my time on the council um, and a few people wanting to grow bees in New Bedford, but we have local ordinances that prevent that. So I guess my question is, have you looked into the local ordinances? Do they allow that? And to follow up on some questions about like cost, um, some of the things that came up too was like the homeowner's policy insurance. Like there's there's a, a wide range of cost with that as well too. Um, and then if I recall something about how, how the bees get their water as well too. I, I just wanna, if you could just elaborate a little on that. And then with the cost, like on, on honey, have you ever like looked into like what is a, with, with all your overall costs, like what would you charge the consumer? Uh, like me, if I would go to your farm and, and how much honey would cost with you. And I know it's hard to predict because inflation is going skyrocket, even with eggs, right? Everything is just right. going crazy right now. So I'm sure people are, are 
dying to get your eggs now because they're just so expensive all over the place. But if right. you could talk a little about quickly about that on the beehives, because I know there's there's a lot of barriers with that. Um, it's not that easy. So it is you, not. However, in Rehoboth, we are a right, right to farm community, which does change that a little bit. Being in a right to farm community, you have access and you have a little bit more leniency. We have nine acres of land, which puts us in the category of an agricultural farm. Um, we can, it puts us in a different tax bracket. It puts us in a different, so we have different regulations for our property than a lot of regular homeowners would. So we have enough room to move the beehives where they're not going to interfere with our neighbors. They're not going to interfere with anything. They'll, what they're going to do is they're going to pollinate my garden and they're going to thrive. And it's going to be, we're going to, we're basically looking to create our own little ecosystem, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's great. And, and congratulations on making it to your um, final semester as well. Too. Thank you so much. Awesome. I just have one really all, quick question. Oh yeah, go for it, Kevin. Just just one really quick one. Um, actually, I am in the bee industry as well, so it's kind of cool to see it up here. So I did have one question. There's a new growing trend with actually like renting your bees out and stuff like that, and that's a big opportunity in Rehoboth. Have you ever thought about doing that, or do you have any plans for renting your bees out? Or I, it is an avenue that I am looking into um, in the beekeeping class that I'm in. It's something we are discussing. So it's something that I will probably look into as I get more into it, um, have my hives established and kind of really get my a feel for what I'm doing with it and how it's working and what's working for my area, for my garden, for my property and what's not. So as I, I want to get a little bit more established before I get into that, but that yeah. is an avenue I might take in the future. Awesome. Thank you. That's exciting. And, Thank so, you. I you know I know my ignorance with this all, but what does rent renting bees mean? I'm just I just want to learn now. So can someone So there oh, Jessica, actually if you want to answer. So um if you would I, a lot of different places you can rent bees um to pollinate. Oh. To pollinate your gardens, to pollinate, you know, your flowers. If you have flowers, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can rent goats to mow your lawn and eat the poison ivy and clear your brush which I have goats but we haven't done that yet either <laughs> but yeah so or and you, you people can actually rent your property to keep beehives as well so they'll keep their beehives on your property okay oh that's interesting so there's a lot of different avenues you can take good to know thank you thank you I just have to say between the bees and the goats you got yourself a little gold mine over there <laughs> I love it and we hope it's a great place to be for that awesome it is. thank you Thank you to all the judges. Those were great questions. And Jessica, congratulations. Um, you know, with nine acres of land, you know, just to piggyback off of what Jen just said, you truly have so many opportunities. You know, not only can you bring in your own bees, you know, you can you could also capitalize with the goats and rent space. And, you know, thanks, Kevin, for educating us all. And uh, you know, now we get to learn about renting bees. So uh that was fabulous. And uh we couldn't be more proud of you, Jessica, and best of luck to you. Um, don't worry. We are on to the last one, guys, here. We're doing great on time. So um, this is it. Our last top contestant, Trinity, are you ready? Yes. Awesome. The floor is yours. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Trinity Dias. I'm the owner of Trinity Dias and Company and currently a student at BCC and will be graduating in May and with an associates in entrepreneurship. Um, a little bit more about my business, uh, Trinity Dias and Company. Um, we help entrepreneurs who own online businesses with executive admin and system support so that they can finally step into their role as CEO. We believe online business owners need to have the resources and support to be able to continue to grow their business while in their CEO role. Uh, we help entrepreneurs with various backend tasks, uh, which include bookkeeping, marketing, systems implementation, and so much more. I started my first business at, at 17 um, as a travel agent. Um, I absolutely loved it so much that I actually still do it today um, as an entity of Trinity Dias and Company. Um, however, starting this business really opened my eyes to the entrepreneurial world and the hardships that these entrepreneurs and business owners face every day. Uh, 
Uh, whenever I would talk to um, other business owners, they would always talk to me about their struggles um, and what um, they were having a hard time with. And I would always offer my help and say, yes, I can do that. And I absolutely will do that for you. Um, and that's kind of, doing that is how I found my passion to help others overcome these obstacles and get their businesses off the ground and scaling. Um, and so we've gone Trinity Dias and Company. Uh, since then, I've completed a numerous amount of courses to learn new skills and um, including capitalizing on the ACES uh, program resources. And like I said before, completing um, my degree um, in May. Um, if chosen as the recipient of the scholarship, it would be given the ability to buy into a course that would educate me further in the areas of coaching. Um, in turn, I would be better equipped to provide the resources and support necessary to help more business owners um, with other areas of their business. Uh, buying into and completing the course will also allow me to grow my business and allow me to market myself from a new perspective and hopefully scale um, my business with new clients. I want to take this opportunity to say how much I appreciate um, everyone coming today and taking the time to be here as well. Thank you. Thank you, Trinity. Mm -hmm. Do any of the judges have questions for Trinity? I have a question. Um, what is um, the schedule of, um, of, um, of offerings? Like uh, what, what, what would you charge somebody looking to do, let's say the full scale, like you said, bookkeeping, marketing, any backend stuff? So um, it depends on the task. So uh, for bookkeeping, it would be by the hour. So if somebody wanted me to reconcile their books every month, I usually charge $50 an hour mm -hmm. um, for that. However, if it's something more of the lines of um, a website design, I might, if, I, if they don't also include um, executive services um, on a monthly basis and it's just the website design, it would probably more be like a package rate, which would be whatever, how many pages, it include how many pages they want in their website, how complex they want the website to be. Um, but usually I charge for a home page, an about us page and a contact page um, and a services page. I include that to be maybe $400 for the whole thing. Okay, one time fee? Yes. Okay, and, and bookkeeping, like if you were, if I were to need it every, every month, let's say or every two weeks, you would have packaging kind of package deals for that? Uh, yes. So they would purchase an hour, um, let's say if they wanted 15 hours a month, they purchase that retainer from me and mm, they would okay. prepay that and then we'd get on our way. Okay. Any other services that you provide for business? Yeah. So I provide a whole bunch of them. So like I said before, uh, systems, I love working with systems. Um, implementing like SOPs into, into businesses, helping um, the business owners streamline their systems, like onboarding uh, clients at, um, and maybe um, streamlining their production uh, systems and all of that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I have a couple questions also. What differentiates you from, you know, an online business owner using something like QuickBooks and, you know, how many people are on your team to be able to give their full attention to helping these individual online business owners grow? Okay, so um, at the moment, it's just me. Um, so I handle all my clients' um, work and I try to keep a specific amount of clients. So I'm able to focus directly on them and not be like, oh my gosh, this is too much. Like, and it's kind of all gets jambled. I have specific dates, specific times for each client so I can focus on it. And the goal would be to hopefully expand to someday so that I would have team members um, within my business who'd be able to focus on this client. And then I have another one who focuses on another client um, to be able to grow and add more clients on and be able to expand my reach. And at what point do you think you would be able to be large enough to delegate to hire somebody, you know, to take on those smaller tasks? And so this way you can just focus on client intake. So I have about 
two to three clients right now who are on monthly, and that doesn't include um, anybody who I have come on as a one-time project. Um, if I was to get another two to three clients, I would probably consider hiring someone. Um, and that would be monthly clients because at that point it would be, okay, I'm going to need the help. I have the clients who are ready, who need my help. I want to help them. Let me look into hiring somebody so we can help them. Okay. And then this class that you're looking to use the investment for, what is this going to do for your business? So it's going to teach me a little bit uh, more about how to coach um, and basically help these business owners set up the correct systems into their business. So once they get it started straight from the beginning and not years into it, they have the foundation, they have the base that they can excel upon and they won't run into those roadblocks around along the way um, that'll <laughs> stop them from growing that'll stop them from scaling and my last question is how do you view yourself do you consider yourself a leader when people your clients will come to you and ask you how many years of experience do you have do you have a team all the questions that we're asking you today how are you going to you know communicate that to your potential clients as somebody who's also building their foundation, also learning these coaching tools, how are you going to facilitate those deals and future contracts with your monthly clients? Absolutely. So I've been doing this for around two years now at the least. Um, so I would absolutely consider myself a leader um, because I've had so much experience and I've kind of come across the problems um, that do happen along the way. And I've found um, solutions. I'm really good at piecing uh, puzzle pieces together. Um, so I would absolutely consider myself a leader and to be able to say, okay, these are the steps that you need to take in order to create that solid foundation in order for you to continue and to scale your business. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Trinity, can you, first of all, great job also with your presentation. Thank you. Um, can you talk to me a little about your marketing strategy, strategy and how you go out there to promote yourself? And then I'm also, it's, first of all, you're sucking me in that you're very knowledgeable of what you do. Um, and I, I enjoy listening to you. So, but when I look at your title, Trinity Dias and Company, right? That it seems that you're the jack of all trades, right? You're still doing travel, I'm sure, for people, right? And I hear all the great things you're doing, but your title seems a little deceiving to me. So if I try to Google you um, and try to find out how you can help me as a business, um, your title throws me off a little, little. So that's just my, my advice. So, but with that, it goes, what I want to know is a little about your marketing strategy, strategy and how you go out there and advertise. Um, so I can see what you can do for me as a business owner. Of course. Um, so I do a lot of advertising. I don't pay for anything, at least if I don't have to, um, I go and I post on social media. I'll advertise on social media, including Facebook, um, Instagram. Um, my biggest one is Pinterest. You get a lot of traffic to your website through Pinterest. Um, however, I'm also trying to get into the community. I had, um, I'm had i joining new networking calls. Um, and actually one of my clients, she's um, a very big on networking. So I get to meet a lot of people through there. Uh, a lot of it right now has been through word of mouth, um, but I'm growing into con networking with the community and um, going through social media channels um, and hopefully being able to outreach to more people. No, that's great. And again, it's just your title. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it just confuses me a little because you, you're offering a lot and I know that you're doing a great job, um, but that title is a little deceiving to me. And, I, and as I stare at it, because um, I don't know what kind of company you are. You explained it so well um, in the yeah. presentation, um, but just think about that in the, fu in the future um, when it says, you know, Trini Dyes and Company to try to be a little bit more detailed. So in 
you know, if we're Googling you and trying to look for your services, that you will that you'll pop up. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I have one question, Nicole, if we have time. Okay. Thank you. Um, very nice job, Trinity. Um, I you're very knowledgeable on your in your in your industry. I personally love the name, um, but that's just me. Um, maybe it's because I have a co at the end of my name now. But um, so where where do you see your company in five years? Where do I see my company in five years? Um, I see it in potentially in uh, the coaching and I'll be able to step into my CEO role and I'll have uh, team members who I'll be able to delegate, delegate tasks to so I can be able to focus on the coaching aspects of it while being able to serve um, these other clients um, on a monthly basis. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Trinity. Congratulations. Uh, I think you're in a couple of my classes right now, not, not just one, a couple. So I see how much you are balancing. And, you know, I've always had a strong work ethic and I admire, you know, students who do as well. And I always worked throughout my college career. And um, I definitely admire your strong work ethic. You're doing a lot. Um, you're wearing a lot of hats right now and you're balancing a lot and you should be really proud of yourself. So awesome job to all four of the top finalists. Um, it truly was amazing to hear all of your business ideas and all of your stories and to get to meet all of you virtually. Um, now it's, it's time for the judges to deliberate. So I am going to move the judges um, into a private room. They will have 10 minutes at 7.50 and they will have 10 minutes to deliberate and they will come back by um, eight o'clock, maybe like 801, 802, and they will announce the winner, okay? So I will keep all of the finalists company and we'll have lots to chat about while the judges deliberate, all right? So here we go. Just give me one second here. All right, guys, so I have assigned uh, the judges to the room and they should be uh, leaving and they will be in a private room. All right. So how are we feeling? Top finalist. How are you guys feeling? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Do you feel like a brick has been removed from your chest now that you're done presenting? <laughs> I think that well, one. <laughs> I definitely feel a little bit better. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> So you all feel like a brick's been removed. So Trinity, let's start with you. You got some really good feedback. So, um, you know, I, you know, I'm a little bit biased, right? Cause I, I pick the judges, but I make sure we have a diverse group of judges, right? Cause I want different perspectives, uh, different personalities. Um, and I have, you know, you saw the judges, so you have, you know, Vaughn, you have Jen, you have Kevin, you have Richard and you have Steven, right? So you have a, a diverse group of people and they're all going to have differing opinions. So how did you feel when Steven gave you that feedback of, I don't love the name? What are your initial thoughts there? And then of course you had, you know, Vaughn jump in and say, well, I like the name. So obviously you're not going to please everyone. But what he said to you, did it resonate at all? What are your thoughts on that? It definitely did. It kind of like my first thought was like, hmm, I wonder if other clients have or potential clients have seen it and been like, oh, she probably doesn't work with my type of business or she doesn't do things that would help me. Um, that was kind of like my first reaction, like my first thought to it. Um, 
the only reason why I did it as Trinity Dice and Company was so that I was able to do other things. Like I wanted my travel agent company to be under it as well. Um, maybe one day I'll be able to kind of break it off and do like um, an online business manager services, something like that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, I actually just, um, you know, was interviewed for an article that was published um, in the South Coast today in the uh, newspaper, in the local newspaper in New Bedford. And it actually was talking about, you know, how do entrepreneurs, how do they go through the thought process? How do they pick out names for their business? And, you know, using a name can go both ways. It can be viewed as a good thing because you're taking pride you're taking stake in your business, you know, you know, you stand by who you are. And right now with you being the sole, you know, employee at your organization, it makes sense. Right. But what you could do is, you know, you could always rebrand it just kind of like Dunkin' Donuts did, you know, they were known for their donuts. They were known for coffee. They were known for breakfast, but now, you know, they're just Dunkin's and um, there's definitely a lot to be said for businesses rebranding and changing their names with intent. Right. So, um, you know, definitely some feedback to consider, but you know, my initial thought is, is I don't think you're going to change the name, but I think you might add something underneath where it kind of identifies it a little bit better. So you're kind of, you know, you're taking that advice, you're adding maybe something after it. Right. But you're not, you're not going away from, you know, what you stand by. Awesome. Great. So Noah, how are we feeling? I feel pretty good. I think I think I did really good. Yeah, I think you left a lot of uh, big impressions on the judges this evening. Definitely. <laughs> I just think your story in general, you know, you're again, I'm going to use that word that perseverance. Yeah, go for it. That perseverance, that drive, you know, you're not going to let anyone or anything stand in your way you know, that type of mentality, it's, it's hard for a lot of people to be as strong as you've been. And I think that it definitely goes for something. So you're feeling good. Oh yeah. I liked how when you're, I was, you know, smiling when you said the thing about a teacher and the math example, because I am terrible at math, you know, many people probably, you know, would never think this. Um, but I actually, when I was in college and my undergraduate, I failed statistics, failed. And I had to retake it. Um, and luckily I passed the course and I got a passing grade. But yeah, I mean, I only, uh, you know, only failed that one course, but math was never my thing. So I, I was really, uh, really relating to what you were saying when you were speaking about that. So a uh, great story there. Thanks, Thank you, Noah. And uh, Emma, how are you feeling? Embarrassed that my dogs, <laughs> they're making so much noise. And I was like, that could be a really good visual, you know. I got to tell you, Emma, we didn't hear this. any background noise. Did you guys, Jessica, uh, no, I didn't hear anything. And that is the truth. <laughs> well, that's good. Because I was like, okay, what are they doing back there? Yeah, no, it, it I thought it very was very nice. I thought it was great, you know, adding your furry friend into the mix, because I think it shows how authentic you are. And I, I think that's a great word for you. You're very authentic. And I think you did a great job presenting. I really do. Thank you. And Dakota, thanks you too. <laughs> Love it. And uh, Jessica, how are we feeling? Oh, a little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, did you get excited um you know when you had some of those you had some really great questions you know did I Kevin, did did Kevin's question make you excited or did it make All you nervous Made me excited because like it felt like they were kind of like it felt like they were interested in what I was with my business so it yeah it made me really really fast when I get excited and I know I was talking fast but that's what happens <laughs> no well you didn't honestly all four of you did an excellent job presenting you know none of you got stage fright you know none of you backed out or froze mid uh pitch there so you all made it through and I, I don't think you spoke fast at all and um thank I, you you know not only did the four of you did do a great job presenting 
but you did a great job answering the questions. And it's funny because I get nervous for you because it's like, here you are, you just did a great job presenting. Like, yes, I'm confident. I know what I'm going to say. And then you're fired with questions and you don't know what to expect. So I think you all handled yourselves really well. Um, and I, I definitely, uh, I felt, I felt the pressure for you, <laughs> for you when the questions came. So uh, we just have about one more minute here at 7.59. So they should be coming back shortly within the next five minutes. So do any of you have any questions for me at all? Are you sure? It could be about anything. It could be about entrepreneurship advice. It could be about anything. You can put me on the spot now. You can fire me with questions. <laughs> Just pricing wise, I find it very hard to have a baseline price for a lot of things just because it's hard to balance between like do I want the client or do like and I'll bring down my prices or should I just say you know what like this is what my experience level dictates. Emma I am so happy you asked that question because we are on Facebook live and you don't understand every entrepreneur goes through that so whether it's a photography business or a pet care business like yourself, every entrepreneur goes through this. And let me just say this. I think the best businesses have a starting price. This is my minimum. I am not willing to go below this minimum. So when I see, you know, photography businesses or whatever it may be, they do that starting price. So they say packages start at a thousand or packages start at 1500 because your time is money. And now with gas prices increasing and, you know, you drive a truck, it's got to be $50 minimum to fill your truck, correct? Oh, yes. So oh, you yes. need to consider that. So you need to say, if I'm driving to your house, let's, I would personally, if I were you, I would put a hundred dollar minimum because it's $50 there and it's $50 back. And even if you don't use that full tank, it's, the insurance for the vehicle, it's the wear and tear, the mileage. I mean, if it was me and I was doing something like you where I'm driving, I would dock my mileage, okay? I know you were talking about hourly, but when you're in a vehicle, you should dock them for mileage. So you should dock the mileage and you should have that minimum. And you should, now that you, you know, you've gone through this process and you know, you're an established entrepreneur, you should never lower your prices. It doesn't matter if, you know, Martha Stewart is knocking on your door and asking, you know, can you take care of my animals or whoever it may be. Um, you have to realize that I am Emma. I am worth X amount of dollars. And it doesn't matter if it's my friend, my cousin or a celebrity, I'm not going to lower my prices. So that's like the first thing, Business 101 that I tell all my entrepreneurs, like, Everyone has a, a target market and whether you're targeting, you know, low income, high income, middle income, whatever it may be, stick to that threshold and stick to your niche, stick to your target market. So if your target market is people in Taunton and Attleboro, then stick to that level of income in those particular towns versus let's say your target market was Westport. Massachusetts or Marion or Mattapoisett, you might have a different level of income. You might have a different threshold. Um, you have to look at the zip codes that you're targeting and what the average income is in those zip codes, if that makes sense. It does. Thank you. No problem. And don't, don't, don't forget. I always say this, the last piece of advice I'm going to say is don't forget. It's more than just the gas. Every single mile you put on that truck, it's a depreciating asset. So every single mile you put on that truck, um, it's just closer. You're going to get to having to buy a new truck. Thank you. No problem. Does anyone else have any questions for me? I'm, I'm excited to answer your questions. This is what I do for a living. I have one. Go for it, Trinity. So do you own a business? I don't know if I know that. <laughs> so I do not own a business, but I come from a family who owns a business. So 
Uh, not many people know this, but I am Armenian and uh, my mother's maiden name is Natalian and that's my middle name. So I am Armenian and my grandfather and his family uh, came to this country with nothing. Uh, my grandfather didn't even graduate from high school and he started a gas station and, you know, he was very entrepreneurial and he said to himself, you know, what if I try selling cars at the gas station? And he started with one car, sold it, got the income, then started with two cars, then three cars. Then he eventually outgrew the lot. Then he bought down the street. He bought like, uh, I think it's 80 acres of land. Don't quote me. And he opened up a car dealership with nothing. And it is still in business today. It's been in business for over 60 years. I'm sad to say that my grandfather passed in COVID. So he passed away in April, 2020. So it's been about two years now since he's been with us, but uh, the business is still thriving today. And I grew up going to that business every single day, every single Saturday I was there. So I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. So I know that a business is uh, blood, sweat, and tears quite literally. So um, I've grown up with that mentality. I've seen my family be able to provide a better life for themselves. And I take that passion that I have for entrepreneurship and I share it with my students. It's so funny you say that because my grandfather actually kind of did the same thing. He came over from Portugal, didn't know any English and started his own um, car shop. Um, and then his entrepreneurship uh, kind of skills passed on to my mom. She owns her own business now. So I guess you could say I'm following the line too. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I help so many students and you're one of my students. And a lot of our students at Bristol are first generation. And a lot of students come from these family businesses. And that's what I've done over the past, you know, couple of years that I've been in this role is not only sometimes am I helping people start their own businesses, but I'm also helping grandchildren take over their family businesses that, you know, they're kind of in uh, the stagnant point in the business. And they come to me and they say, you know, my, my family started this business 50 years ago, a hundred years ago, you know, how do I reinvent the wheel? How do I, you know, move on here? How do I grow the business? So, um, you know, I'm sure your family is very proud of you. And, um, you know, I appreciate that question because probably not a lot of people know that about me, but yeah, I'm just extremely passionate about helping people. Um, anyone that knows me in my life, I'm such a people person that that's why this uh, role kind of just fit for me. Awesome. So welcome back judges. How's it going? Did we going come well. to a decision? We have. Awesome. All right, guys. So I'm not going to leave you hanging anymore. All right, judges. Who is our lucky winner? Well, before, before um, Vaughn announces the winner, um, <laughs> all right, I was on mute. <laughs> so we, um, first of all, I just, I quick message to Noah, Emma, Jessica, and Trinity. Um, first of all, all of you have done a wonderful job. Um, for someone like myself and many of the other judges who've done this before, um, this year was really, really tough. Um, and that's because you made it very tough for all of us because all of you had great, great um, ideas that you, that you pitched to us. And then most importantly, you got us all engaged during your presentations to us. And even in the judges room, all of us were having a very good discussion about your presentations. We were, we were still asking questions. Um, some of us were Googling businesses uh, about what's going on. So you have us all engaged about what you're doing. So it was very tough for us to pick one winner. I think all of you are our big winners um, and you're gonna do wonderful, wonderful things. And as we came back, I was hearing um, some of you know Trinity's story as well, um, coming from uh, a family of immigrants like myself and like many other um, judges and other people as well. It's so important to share, to continue to share that story um, to a lot of other other people as well, and share your experiences at Bristol and, and so on. So it doesn't stop here. Um, if you don't win, just know that you're all winners. I think some of us will maybe probably reach out to you and use your services um, in the future as well. And of course, all of us have great contacts. 
um, and the community. So if there's something that we can do as well, please reach out. We're more, more than happy to help. Um, for instance, like Noah, if there's something that I can do on behalf of the city of Bedford in, in the context that I have, um, feel free. And I know that I can speak for all the judges who have a great resources that we can help you along the way. But again, great job to everyone. You really made it very difficult for us um, and keep up the good work. We're really looking forward to seeing um, what else you can do in the future, which is going to be an amazing thing. So keep it up. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Uh, yeah, you definitely should all be very proud of yourselves and, and how far you're, you've come and how far you're going to go in your businesses and your personal lives. So with that being said, I get the hard job of actually saying who won. So I think this was Stephen's mission. Um, he's the nice guy. I'm the bad guy. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> but um, the winner tonight is... Jessica Furtado. Congratulations. I, I mean, can we unmute and Jessica, clap? Jessica, you're on yeah. mute. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, I don't even know what else to say besides thank you. I so appreciate this so much. <laughs> This is very exciting for you. And it was a tough decision. You know, we went through all the pros and cons of everybody. And, you know, I don't want anyone to think that their ideas are less than because it was a very tough decision. And thank you guys all for your presentations. And Jessica, we just know great things are going to come from this for you. And we, you know, we really can't wait to see what the future holds. Thank you guys so much. And to all the other contestants, you guys are amazing. I can't wait to see what you guys do as well. Thank you all. Thank you for the opportunity to present and thank you for everything. You know, Jessica, seeing you get emotional made me get emotional. And uh, that's exactly why, uh, you know, I do this for the college and uh, I'm just so happy for you. And thank you so much, Steven and Vaughn and Kevin. Um, and Richard and uh, Barbara for being here and Jen and everyone, all of the judges. And thank you to all of the finalists. Thank you, Trinity, Noah, Jessica, and Emma. Thank you guys so much. Um, I really appreciate it. And you guys are what keeps Bristol going and you guys are what keeps Ace going. So keep living your dreams and never stop dreaming. And I'm just so proud and honored that I can be a part um, of your process here at Bristol. So thank you guys so much. And congratulations, Jessica. Uh, you should be on, beyond proud. And now you can celebrate. And uh, maybe we'll all celebrate with you. And we'll come by some of your honey this summer or next year whenever it's ready. Absolutely. I'll let you know. <laughs> awesome. I'd be, I'd be very curious, Jessica, when you have it all up and running, by the way. And I truly mean it, and the judges probably are laughing, but I would love to go and make a trip to Rehoboth and see it and just learn a little bit more. So please. I will absolutely here. reach out to you when everything's all set up and established. Please. Thank and you. Fun fact of the day for everyone. When allergy season comes around, you need to call Jessica to get local honey to help you with those allergies. Okay. That is true. <laughs> Put it on a business card, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely will. <laughs> awesome. I love it, Jen. I, I got to tell you, I'm a huge, huge honey user and I put it in my tea. I put it in everything. And uh, I'm just very excited for you to see the products that you create, whether it's soap or, you know, honey or lotions out of it. Um, just beyond, beyond excited for you and the possibilities in the future for you to grow your business. Thank you so much. Thank you, awesome. everyone. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Thank you. This concludes our event. Thank you to everyone who watched on Facebook Live. Again, congratulations to Jessica and congratulations to all of the entrepreneurs making their dreams a reality. Good evening, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Congrats. Thank you so much. Congrats.